Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers. Thank you for joining us for the EYE Show podcast. Today we're going to talk about the light adjustable lens, which has been a big game changer for many practices in the world to provide precise vision for our cataract surgery patients. So the wonderful news is that it's the best time in the history of the world to have cataract surgery. That's number one. However, we still cannot provide perfect vision without any halos or glare, a distance intermediate and reading all the time. So that's the downside. We cannot replace your lens and vision quality the way it was when you were 10 or 15 years old. We wish we could and we're getting closer, but we're not there yet. So I want to talk today about what the light adjustable lens is number one, number two, how it compares to the other implants we have, number three, who's the best candidate for the light adjustable lens, and number four, what are kind of the risks of this particular technology. So the light adjustable lens is a very exciting technology because it's a monomer filled silicone lens. And so I'm gonna give you some examples as we go through on the YouTube version of this so you can understand what we're talking about. So this is an example of an eyeball. We have the front surface called the cornea and we have a lens which usually is clear. I think I have a clear one somewhere here. And so what we're trying to do is basically change out the dirty, what I call a pillow in a pillowcase for a lot of my patients. It's supposed to be clear. It's located kind of behind the iris. And as we get older, it gets cloudy in different ways. It can be on the, on the front surface or on the back surface, like a posterior subcapsular cataract. You can kind of see this. So there's a kind of pillow in a pillowcase. The pillow is the cataract. The pillowcase is the capsule. And what we're going to do with a usually 10 minute procedure, most often we change out that pillow into something that's clear. It can either have a little yellow tint or it can be very kind of clear. And this is an example of the size of it in real life. If you look here on the YouTube video, it is super small. This does not open up. You can kind of see it's super small. And we basically make a very small two millimeter incision usually, sometimes 1.9 and just put this inside this bag, capsular bag, with a very fine technology, often using sometimes femtosecond laser or manual cataract surgery to achieve our results. There's only really two decisions now patients have to make. What kind of cataract surgery, manual or femtosecond laser? We all prefer femtosecond laser because it just makes the recovery so much faster, the cornea looks so clear the next day, uh, the risks of complications are close to zero, at least in my hands, and so we love femtosecond laser. The second decision is harder, and that's the implant. And so we've talked about it in previous podcasts. There's basically three types of implants available. The first one is called a monofocal, which is covered by insurance. We have a sheet that we sometimes now show patients that kind of goes through all the different implants. Uh, monofocal being number one, and there's different types. Number two is kind of a multifocal or extended depth of focus. And the third one is the light adjustable lens. We're going to go through that today. So the light adjustable lens is providing excellent quality, image quality of vision because it's like a monofocal in the sense that it provides one plane of vision generally. But the way the light adjustable works is that it's adjustable. So the best image quality out of these three implants, the monofocal, which insurance covers, the panoptic, which is amazing in terms of giving you distance, intermediate, and reading without needing glasses so much, and the light adjustable, the best image quality is with the monofocal and with the actual light adjustable implant. So what we talk about when we say this is that the patients that should have this type of lens are generally patients that want the light adjustable lens in both eyes. They don't want to have any halos and glare. They want to have the best quality image. They want to have the best contrast sensitivity. So if you have glaucoma or you've had LASIK before, uh, or if you're used to precise vision or you're an engineer, uh, really into precision, the light adjustable is the best we can, we can do in terms of having best outcomes. And the reason for that is because we can usually really get the quality of vision to precision because we correct almost all the astigmatism. And so we've done about 100 cases here. We've had this technology since the beginning of 2023. And we are very happy that we work with this uh, company car called RX Sight. This printout kind of goes through our outcomes, which is very, very positive because the surgeon can know how they're doing. And in our practice here, we had 97% of patients have their target vision, which was 2020 or better, which was very exciting. So for distance, for intermediate, I should say for reading, we had 94% had 2020 or better, uh, and 100% had better than 20, 
or 20 over 25, which is excellent. So we did a really great job with our outcome so far, and we're seeing patients that are very, very happy. The light adjustable lens is also very good for patients that just can't get out of their contact lenses long enough to do the A scan. The A scan is where we come in, we do a measurement of your eyeball to see what your size of your eyeball is. And so we have a lot of patients that are very nearsighted, very high myopes, that they just can't function for the two weeks you can't wear contact lenses before we measure your eye. And that can be very hard for patients. So those patients that just can't do it, we tell them, well, okay, do what you can, but we'll measure your eye. But then what happens is if the contact lens is on the cornea, it can change the corneal curvature and then our measurements are off. And years ago, or I should say last year, and for years, that would be an issue because when we would do our cataract surgery, the stigmatism would be back. If we didn't measure it correctly, the precision wasn't as, as good. So the light adjustable, even if a patient has contact lenses, the day of their A scan and the measurements are not perfect, we can correct it after the actual cataract surgery because the light adjustable lens or this light delivery device, this particular device is called an LDD, can actually change the lens itself. And so the lens of the light adjustable, let's just go back a little bit, kind of looks like this. So this is a regular monofocal implant. And what monofocal means is that it provides one plane of vision. And so this has, in the light adjustable, it has basically this monomer, poly, the kind of like a, I would say actually, it's, it's actually technically a monomer filled silicone IOL, but the, the haptics, these little handles are PMMA. So they're not like this one that's acrylic, but they're PMMA, so they're a little bit sharper, harder to put in a bit, but this can be actually adjusted. This actual lens is called an Acrosoft uh, lens, which is a acrylic lens, very easy to do. It's called a monofocal, so mono means one plane of vision. When we say plane of vision, we mean usually distance, intermediate, like your cell phone or dashboard in your car, and then reading. And so the monofocal is very good for one plane of vision. You can choose distance, intermediate, and reading. When we put this in patients, 99% of patients need glasses pretty much distance intermediate reading because they will wear the progressives. And progressives, as we know, can range anywhere between $300 to $1,200, and most people get new glasses every year. So the light adjustable lens is kind of an investment in trying to decrease your need for needing glasses all the time. And so we love these implants that we have, but we're trying to talk about what's the best bang for your buck going long term. So if you're 90 plus years old, maybe light adjustable is not the best for the patient because their life expectancy may not be that long. But if you're younger, then light adjustable tends to be a better investment from what we can see in the preliminary data in terms of not needing progressive or expensive glasses, correcting for astigmatism in the long term. So that's what we're hoping to see. The second thing I want to mention about the light adjustable lens are the risks. So with the actual multifocal lens, comparing these two, so the multifocal lens, this is called a panoptics lens, it's like a trifocal or multifocal, meaning that there's these rings that cause the ability of the light to focus in a way that you can see distance, intermediate, and reading without needing too much glasses intervention, which is wonderful. The light adjustable lens does not have these rings, therefore the light adjustable doesn't have a lot of halos and glare, I would say zero halos and glare or equal to a monofocal. And so that's the best quality image you can have. The panoptics, which we love, we love this lens. It works very well for patients that don't drive at nighttime. And that, so that's my first question I'll ask patients is, do you drive a lot at nighttime? Do you want to drive at nighttime? A lot of our patients can't because the cataract is causing halos and glare and they don't want to have halos and glare because they do want to drive at nighttime. If the answer to that first question is, I do not want to have halos and glare at all at nighttime, we cannot put a panoptics in because it will give halos halos and glare. The light adjustable is the best, followed by the monofocal if a patient wants to have no halos and glare. And so we have still excellent other implants that we put in, such as the Vividi, the Symphony OptiBlue, the IC Aptera, which is on hold right now by the company, uh, the Synergy. These implants are excellent, but those all tend to cause halos and glare. And so we do kind of put it in the panoptics category. Uh, the panoptics has had given us the best results so far. That's why we all, most of us in the country are leaning towards panoptics in general, but they're all excellent lenses and they all have their positives and negatives in terms of contrast and 
sensitivity, uh, image quality, amount of halos and glare, the depth of focus, and so forth. So talk to your surgeon about what the implant you know, is best for you. But for most of our patients, those are the three ones we do recommend. The monofocal, which is covered by insurance, but you'll need glasses for sure. The panoptics, which generally will get you less dependent on glasses for distance, intermediate, and reading but you will have halos and glare when you drive at nighttime and the light adjustable lens which provides the best quality image uh, for distance intermediate and reading and we're going to go through the risk in just a minute about the light adjustable lens without halos and glare so what are the risks of the light adjustable lens what are the negatives so the biggest negative is that generally most patients need to have it in both eyes because we do aim one eye for a little bit more distance intermediate and the other eye for a little bit more intermediate and reading most most patients, 99% of our patients have been okay with that little bit of adjustment. The brain has not rebelled on that. But I'm sure we're going to run into some patients that just are not happy with that. We'll have to aim them for distance intermediate and they'll need more reading glasses. That's the worst thing that I think we're going to see with light adjustable is it just still doesn't really give you the full range of distance intermediate and reading and you still need glasses for one plane of vision like your reading or a distance. So we have a very few patients, maybe I've had one in the last six months that said, they absolutely want to have no glasses for reading and they're okay wearing glasses for distance. So that is an option. So if you're a not nearsighted patient, if you're a myope, you got to tell your doctor you want to not need glasses for reading because that's what you're used to. Because when we take out that cataract, if you don't say anything to your doctor or your doctor forgets to ask, when you wake up from cataract surgery, you will not be able to see without reading glasses for near for a lot of these implants. And the same thing for light adjustable. You want to tell your doctor, I want to not need glasses for whatever it is. You don't want to you know, need it for distance, intermediate, and reading, and often you have to choose. So that's the biggest negative. The second biggest negative, I would say, is the cost. This can be an expensive lens. And so there are some cheaper ways to kind of try to change a uh, maybe some options to help. Uh, obviously, we prefer light adjustable in both eyes, but some of, sometimes we'll put light adjustable in the dominant eye, and then we'll use a monofocal that's covered by insurance called iHance in the other eye. Not as perfect quality in terms of the, uh, well, the quality is actually pretty good. It's, it's the depth of focus, whether you're going to see all the distances perfectly is not perfect, but it is an option for patients that are trying to save a little bit of money because that monofocal does give you a little bit of, of a range of vision, not as good as the Vividi or the Panoptics, but there's a little bit of room there. So just consider that as an option. Some patients do find that a little bit of a time saver and money saver, I should say, money saver. The other biggest negative of the light adjustable lens is the number of times you need to come in after your surgery. So I did a little kind of picture here after cataract surgery. So if you look at this little image on YouTube, you'll say that if we do the first eye with just a regular, whatever cataract surgery you have, you have the first eye is the surgical day, you have one day post-op. That's for whatever implant you have. If you have a monofocal, which insurance covers, you're gonna come in for about one to two weeks. Sometimes we'll skip if everything looks perfect, but you'll usually come in at one month. Sometimes you'll come in at three months. Sometimes you'll come in at six months. You'll come in at a year. So that's about one, two, three, four, five post-op visits on average. Sometimes we can cut them out because patients look perfect. In the light adjustable, you'll have the same idea, your one day of the surgical day, you'll have your one day post-op, but then you'll come in at one to two weeks for your fraction check. We'll then check you again in about 17 days after the second eye is done for what's called the light delivery device correction if you need it. And then you'll come in as needed to recheck the implant to see if we need to correct the change the implant for the light delivery device. And then at the very end, you'll have two lock-ins. And what the point of that is, the lock-in is once the implant has been changed to the shape that we want for the vision, then we will allow this UV delivery device, basically this is UV light, to allow all the monomers, the, the actual molecules in the implant to set themselves so they won't change again. And then patients can take off the sunglasses, which they have been wearing uh, outside since the surgery. That's the third uh, negative of LAL, is that you need to wear sunglasses outside when you're uh, not, until you have that lock-in period. So for the light adjustable lens, there's about one, two, three, four, five 
visits after the surgery as well. It can vary depending on how much precision you want. So there's been many patients we've seen in the last year that are so close to perfect, we don't need to adjust. They're very happy and we just do the two lock-ins and they're done. So that we have a lot of patients like that. So it's not that much more visits than a regular cataract surgery. Although I think that was our initial concern with our patients. So those are the biggest negatives for our patients with the time, the investment of the money. But generally it's most often worth it if you have any of those things that I mentioned, such as wanting to not have halos and glare, wanting precise image quality, uh, you have had previous LASIK or, or, or refractive surgery, you have our glaucoma patient, you have an epiretinal membrane or anything in the retina like macular degeneration, we can't put panoptics in those patients. Uh, you're a high myope, have had contact lenses, cannot live without it. Uh, even in our dry eye patients, we love the monofocal and the light adjustable lens because of image quality precision. Patients who have dry eye, their multifocal can change the aberrations and affect their quality of vision. And your vision is only as good as your tear film. And I can prove this to you because if you don't blink for the next, you know, two, three minutes, everything's gonna be blurry, your eyes will start to hurt. So the step ladder sheet I've given to patients, you all have seen it. We have an updated one with all the tools in the world here. Uh, we have a medical student who actually helped us put this together, Elizabeth Brooks. And so this is our new kind of checklist of how to help with allergic conjunctivitis and dry eyes. Don't forget to think about that because the key thing with any of these implants is using artificial tears non-preserved after surgery, doing the warm compresses, blinking, getting that oil to come out because that affects the quality of your investment. So you can spend a lot of money on wonderful cataract surgery, be glasses free, essentially, or little, little reliance on glasses, I should say, but the vision's not good because your tear film is still dry. So still we recommend focusing on keeping your tear film really nice and stable. So those are the key things I wanted to mention. This is an investment. It's not for everybody. It's customizable. That's what's so exciting. You still have the same risk of needing a separate laser after the first surgery called a YAG laser because the capsule, remember this pillow and pillowcase idea that I told people about, told you about, the back part of the pillowcase called the back period posterior capsule can get hazy still in about 30% of patients with any of these lenses, even the light adjustable. And then we can open it up with a very straightforward laser machine that takes usually about a minute, covered by insurance, not painful. You can return to work right away. The YAG capsulotomy sometimes is needed, not always. So that's still you know risk for all these implants. And so just keep that in mind. And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to mention for all the patients out there listening. So thank you for joining us for this show. Please pass this on to patients and friends and thank you for subscribing. Have a great day.